Welcome to 1.2, section 1.2. Use segments and congruence is our title. And our objective is I can use segment postulates. Postulates, what's postulates? To identify congruent, you guys probably know what congruent means, uh, segments, now you do know what segments mean. So we have some new words going on here. Let's write our essential question. You should have already written this down. How do I, how do I use segment postulates to identify congruent segments? And our key vocab in this section is postulate axiom. What's an axiom? Coordinate, distance between congruent segments. Okay, so we gotta get familiar with this new vocab coming up. In line here, here we go. So in geometry, yep, all this from the textbook is also in your notes, so I'll just go off of your notes. In geometry, a rule that is accepted without proof, that's it, accepted without proof, is called a postulate or an axiom. So postulate and axiom, those are synonyms of each other, they mean the same thing. And what is a postulate, what is a axiom? It is a rule that is accepted without proof. A rule that is accepted without proof. And here's an example, postulate number one. We call it the ruler postulate. The points on a line can match, can be matched one to one with real numbers. That makes sense. Here is my ruler and here is here are points on this line and each of those points can be matched with a, a real uh, number. The real number that corresponds to the point is the coordinate. So we could say this is coordinate one, coordinate two, uh, the coordinates of the point. And the distance between points A and B, written as AB. Hey, notice there is no bar. I mean, let's do that. Let's kind of put a little thing here and say no bar. Whoa, what does that mean? Okay, when there was a bar on top of it, that would be a segment. When there's a just an arrow with or a, a bar with one arrowhead, that's a ray. When it's a bar with two arrowheads, heads, it's a line. But when there's no bar, what does that mean? It means distance. Okay? The distance between point A and point B. So this distance between so in other words, just writing A B by itself in geometry that means a whole lot it means the distance between point a and point b and it's a whole lot easier just to write a b so isn't uh, geometry notation helpful it is we have to learn it though it is new to us so this distance is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates a and b remember absolute value so let's emphasize these bars here. And what should I do? Make a little arrows, something like this. Going up there and write absolute value. Okay, so we are then subtracting, getting the difference between these two coordinates and then taking the absolute value of them. So for example, what is the distance between two and five? Well, if I said two, well, if I said five minus two, that would give me three, that's easy. But what if I, if I did, if I just happened to switch those and said two, no, yeah, said two minus five. What is two minus five? Well, that's negative three. Is there such thing as a negative distance? No way, dude. Can't drive a negative distance. You always drive a positive distance. That's why we say that the distance is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates a and b. So what is the absolute value of negative three? It is positive three. Think of those bars as coming down and if there is a negative there, it knocks off that negative. Okay, you are ready. No, hold on. <laughs> we are ready to go through example one and then, yeah, sorry about that. We'll do example one and actually, let me talk about this little section here in the book before example one. In the diagram above, the small numbers in the coordinates x, 
and then see that small number there and small number two? Those are called subscripts. There's such a word as superscript. So for example, x with a superscript two, that's x squared. That's a superscript. But when it has the, let, the number, or it could be a letter, uh, that is a, a below, small and below, it's submerged. That is a subscript. And the coordinates are read as, this is how they do it, well, x sub one, you could say it that way, or x of one, or x one. There are different protocols, manners of uh, saying that symbol. But you understand that that is this is the x coordinate of point one, and we could say just x sub one or x one if you wanted to. And the distance between points A and B or AB, remember that symbol right there, says all of that for us. Just this one little symbol says all of these words is also called the length of. Now, how is this different? Oh, it has a bar on top of it, so the length of segment AB. Okay. And sorry for the announcement, let's keep on plowing forward. And this is the announcement. I'm doing this in the morning here, <laughs> so ignore that announcement behind me. Example one, apply the ruler postulate. So measure the length of S or segment, I almost messed it up, segment ST to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So I can pull out my, here it is, my ruler. Make sure you start on zero. And it's looking to me, and then they want centimeter, so this would be like 35 millimeters, which would be 3.5 centimeters. And is that what they're doing here? So yeah, they got 3.4, so roundabout. That was close. And adding segment lengths, when three points are collinear, you can say that one point is between the other two, so the, remember collinear, co means common, uh, or um, what do we say, same? I don't have the, my notes right here. Review that real quick. We said uh, together, or mutually, or common. I remember common, but I didn't remember together or mutually. So collinear means they are together, these points are together on the same line, or they, they share mutually the same um, uh, line. So these three points are collinear and point B is between points A and C. Uh, and point E is not collinear. Therefore, yeah, I, I sort of know what you mean that uh, point E is sort of between uh, points D and F. But uh, in geometry, the word between is a technical term. So point E is not between. In order to be between, it has to be collinear and between. Postulate number two. What is a postulate? It is a rule that is accepted without proof. And postulate number two, segment addition postulate. If B is between A and C, here's point B, it's between A and C, got that. Then AB, the distance between A and B, plus BC, the distance between BC, equals AC, this whole distance. So that makes sense. So in other words, if this was, uh, let's call it three inches or whatever, and this was two inches or whatever, whatever what would be the length of AC? Well, of course, it'd be five. Uh, duh. And that's why we call it a postulate. It's a rule that is accepted without uh, proof. It's just obvious. Uh, line segments that have the same length are congruent. Oh, hey, that's a big word for us. And we're going to use that over and over and then a few hundred times, more than a hundred times. Congruent. So in order for segments to be congruent, what has to be true? They have to have the same length, the exact same length. So, and notice here, let's put uh, lengths are equal. This is really important. So notice when it says AB that the length of segment AB uh, equals the length of segment CD. So lengths are numbers, numbers. So write the word numbers. And then segments are congruent because segments are shapes, shapes. So numbers are equal and shapes are congruent. 
And notice the symbol for congruent. I'm kind of making mine bigger so it's clear. It might be sloppy though. But you see what I'm doing? It's an equal sign with a squiggly on top. And that means congruent. So let's do that down here. This big equals and then a big squiggle. I don't know what the technical term, tilde in Spanish maybe. I call it squiggle. So here's the equal sign. Numbers are equal. Shapes are congruent. That's importante. Okay, example number two. Apply the segment addition postulate. Cities known on the map lie approximate shown on the map uh, lie approximately in a straight line, and uh, use the given distance to find the distance from Lubbock, Texas, to St. Louis, Missouri. So if I know that it is 380 miles from Lubbock to Tulsa, and it's uh, 360 miles from Tulsa to St. Louis, how would I figure out how long it is from Lubbock to St. Louis? Duh, you just add the two together. 380 plus 360, and they're telling us it give us, gives us uh, 740. Yeah, that's right, looks good to me. Okay, your turn, guided practice. For one and two, yep, you have that. And I did not include one and two because you may not have a ruler at home. That's fine, we'll practice this in uh, class. But you do have examples three and four. So go ahead and pause the video and do um, try to practice uh, three and four on your own. Now that you've done that, let's do example. Let me do example three for you. And example four and then you guys can do the guided practice after that use the diagram to find now when it says GH remember that's the distance of a segment GH so GH is right here huh and this whole thing is 36 so I have the whole thing 36 and then I take away 21 see how that works got the whole thing of 36 take away 21 and I'm left with uh, the length of GH. So what is 36 minus 21? And I'm cheating. It says uh, 15 because <laughs> I'm in a rush here. 36 minus 21. Yeah, yeah, it's 15. We got it. See how that works though? Take the whole thing and then take away this other part and you're left with what's remaining. That's how you think of it. 36 minus 21 gives us uh, GH. Congruent segments. And I, yeah, I have that. So I jumped ahead, didn't I, in the book? So this is what we talked about here. And let me also emphasize this uh, symbol. These two symbols here mean congruent. So this this little symbol. Let me do it in red, make it stand out a little bit. Uh, those are congruent markings, which tells us just those little two little tick marks there tell us that these two segments are congruent uh, with each other. Example number four, we're going to plot these points, uh-huh, we just did there, and determine whether these two dudes are congruent. So what you do is notice that here the y-coordinates are the same, but the x-coordinates are different. So what is the distance from negative three to two? Well, I could just count the blocks. One, two, three, four, five. That would work. But let's do it mathematically. Let's do, uh, remember, it's the, it's the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. So uh, negative 3 minus 2. What is negative 3 minus 2? Well, that's uh, negative 5. But what is the absolute value of negative 3 minus 2? Well, the absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. And we could switch that around. We could have said uh, 2 minus negative 3 and I'll erase this later from the book. Um, remember, minus a negative gives us a positive, so 2 plus uh, 3 is 5. So whether it doesn't matter, does not matter what the order is, as long as you take the opposite value of it at the end. So that's why distance is always positive. Distance is always positive. And you can do the same thing for this dude down here. Notice that the x-coordinates now are the same. x-coordinates are the same, and y-coordinates are different, so we would take the difference. And why do they give us the same numbers? They should have, well, I guess they're not, are they? They're not. Okay, this one is uh, positive three and negative two. Okay, saved by the bell, or we have to end there. So you guys are ready.
go ahead and do I, I did a little bit different than in here to make it so that you could uh, draw it but you could do everything on this uh, the rest of the notes there so go ahead and do that uh, now that was fun thanks for being with me